tonight is a special night, you guys, and we're, um, this, it, it actually just commences a special uh, week because this coming Sunday is going to be one of those Sundays that is always thrilling, uh, where after I do what I'm going to be doing on Sunday is uh, we get tons of letters of people uh, copying letters that they've sent to the IRS, turning us into the government, Department of Justice. It happens every time. It's awesome. And what they don't know is that, um, that we, we actually send one sermon a year to the Department of Justice and to the IRS under the jurisdiction of our attorney uh, to challenge the Johnson Amendment, which some pastors say is why they don't speak out on issues. Uh, but we've since found out that those pastors use the Johnson Amendment to hide behind so that they don't speak out on issues. <laughs> and... Um, we're not going to be like that, but uh, we're, going to, we're going to speak the truth. And so I want to put a verse up uh, to set the, the evening. Psalm 33, verse 12 says, blessed is the nation. By the way, see the definite article, the, in front of nation? This is pretty cool, everybody. You want to, might want to take note of this. Uh, when it says blessed is the nation, uh, guess what it means or I should say, guess what it doesn't mean? It doesn't mean Israel only. It means Israel and any nation. That's awesome. Our founding fathers quoted this verse. They loved this verse. Blessed, happy. God wants you happy as a people. Is the nation, any nation, whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as, as his own inheritance. The Bible tells us that God proclaims that there's neither Jew nor Gentile, there's neither male nor female, slave or free man, but all are one in Christ, and that is the epicenter of our foundation tonight. We are happy to be residing in a constitutional republic that has been given to us by our founding fathers, who received that from the forefathers, and that was the Pilgrim Fathers. And so you and I live in what is known as a constitutional republic, not a democracy. And uh, all across the United States, uh, the vote is going to be going underway. In fact, I don't know if you saw the news, but yesterday and today, uh, Roy, what are you doing here with me? What? It's an off switch on the phone. It's really easy. You sit up front to play that. So... Yesterday, yesterday and today, a record was set of people voting in the state of Georgia. Did you see this? We don't know what it means yet, but somewhere in the vicinity of 2020, uh, at this time, about 180,000 people physically came out to vote. And um, yeah, that's great. That's in 2020. Uh, on the first day, 180,000 people turned out to vote. That is foot traffic, physical. Uh, opening day of voting in Georgia was over 300,000 people. And um, we have no idea how they voted. Uh, we may never know how they voted. Uh, but real quick, um, before I get out of the way, and, and we have a, an amazing night, and then I'll come back throughout the evening. But I want to lay these things out before you real quick. We are not voting for a personality, but a policy. So, listen, I'm going to say this, and I'm not going to apologize for it. I do not believe everybody should be allowed to vote. No, I'm going to explain. That just made headlines right there. That would be, be on the news tomorrow. In early America, not everybody could vote because you had to have skin in the game. You had to own land or you had to own a business because that presupposed then that you cared about how the nation went. Not just anybody could vote. Now what's interesting about that versus today is back then you had to qualify. You had to be, you had to have skin in the game. I say it this way because you should be educated enough to vote. Why should you be granted the right to vote when you don't know how to vote? I'm not saying that you have to vote my way. You can vote any way you want. 
but you should know what this government is about. And when you vote for somebody's personality, you have no right to vote. You're, 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 you go to Hollywood instead and go on a game show. <laughs> to vote on personality rather than policy. Let me put, put, let me put it to you this way. If you're going to vote for somebody because of their race, you are a racist. If you are going to vote for somebody because of their gender, then you're a sexist. That's a fact. You may not like it, but what I just said is 100% true. I'm going to vote for him because he's a man. You're a racist. Or a sexist, I should say. If I'm going to vote for him because he's white, you're a racist. If I'm going to vote for her because she's uh, Indian. What do, why do people laugh at that? Be, listen, then you're a racist. I'm going to vote for her because she's a female. Then you're a sexist. It should be policy not personality. We're not voting. We're not to vote. Listen, we're not to vote for ourselves. We're, we're supposed to vote for the, what's best for the nation. And by the way, you shouldn't run for office for yourself and to line your own pockets. You should run to serve the people. It is we the people. Listen, we're not voting for what's popular. We're voting for who's patriotic. Amen. Who loves this country? Yes. Listen, anybody running for office saying this country needs to change and there needs to be fundamental change, we're, we're just days away from fundamentally changing America, what does that mean? We have a constitution, it's proven. We've been a nation that has known how to govern itself. That's been tested. We need to get back to where we belong as a nation. And then listen, we're not voting, as I alluded to earlier, we're not voting for a democracy, contrary to CNN. We're voting for a republic. A democracy is a group that decides. A republic is you decide. That's why we say we the people. It is a republic. We are voting for establishing a more perfect union. That's one of our commitments as a country. If you're an American, you already know that. That one vote after another leads us closer to forming a more perfect union. We are voting for biblical beliefs and foundations that made this nation great. We don't have to apologize for that. It is the history of this nation. And people who say otherwise to you are ignorant of the facts. And if they have a hard time with facts, they can just start with the Mayflower Compact. It's not going to kill them to read it. It's two paragraphs long. And that's enough to tie their brain in a knot because that is America's birth certificate. We are voting to preserve the Constitution of the United States, not to undermine it and to change it. And then finally, we are voting for those who will do the right thing. And you're going to hear from those who have been vetted by others regarding their worldview, and we've invited them. And we're excited about that tonight, that you're going to be meeting people that are going to appear on your ballot. And we want you to pray for them, and we want you to remember them. And before we get into this any further, it is absolutely essential. Please hear what I'm going to say. You're going to, you are, you're, you're going to see graphically why you need to know this. Tomorrow night at the Chino Valley School Board meeting, it will be a freak show. You need to show up. There is a coalition that is forming of reprobates, degenerates that are going to come in parade and they are, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but they're recruiting your kids from the campus to come on out in support of them. You'll hear more about this and you'll see some of it tonight. That's tomorrow, by the way, October 17th, Thursday, 6 p.m. 
at the Chino Valley School District office on Ramona. It's the new location. It's a beautiful location. And then also, we want to remind all of you, I don't know about you, but are you doing this 21 days of fasting and prayer with, uh, with uh, Tracy Alexander? We have Calvary Chapel Chino Hills has joined up with Calvary Chapel Knoxville. And I'm telling you, if you have not signed up, boy, are you missing out. It is awesome. And we encourage you. You can sign up anytime. You can do the QR code and uh, get the daily devotions and be part of praying, fasting, all the way up uh, to the uh, election itself. And so uh, without f- uh, any further delay, I'm going to uh, invite out. <laughs> it's it's kind of sad. If you were to find my phone and type in attorney, there's 23. I counted them today. I have 23 attorneys. And uh, this is one of them. I want you to meet tonight Robert Tyler and give Robert Tyler a great welcome. Constitutional attorney. Love this man. Thank you, sir. This is a big stage. It's a lot bigger than the courthouses I've been in. (laughs) Uh, It's an honor to be here with you all. Um, You know, uh, we're coming up against an unprecedented time. Uh, even in history, when you go back and you take a look at things that happened in, even in the Civil War, when uh, war was about to be, what, well, when Lincoln was running and he was out and he was campaigning, he came out and he was fighting against some horrific issues. And back then, it was, they were dealing with slavery and dealing with the fact that if you were black, you, weren't even, you couldn't even be considered a citizen in the United States. And uh, Ronald Reagan comes, excuse me, Ronald Reagan, Abraham Lincoln, maybe reincarnated, I'm not sure. (laughs) Just kidding, that's not my, that's not my, that's not my theology, okay? (laughs) Sorry, Jack. That was a joke. So, but the, but what happened is Abraham Lincoln, he, he was out to do good and, and wanted to do the right thing. And, and they fought and he came out and he said, what we have to do is we have to get out, we have to get engaged, and you have to get out and get to the polls and vote. That's what he was saying. We've got to activate ourselves. We're in a similar situation today, folks. I'm telling you, uh, I go to court, I'm litigating cases. I, I have a case that we're defending uh, against uh, Hunter Biden suing our client. And uh, I tell you, You go into court and and it's very difficult to feel like you can get a fair hearing in front of these judges that have been appointed by Joe Biden who donated to Joe Biden's campaign. Even when we try to have them removed, we're not able to get them removed. Folks, the election is incredibly important because what's happening these days is judges are getting appointed that they don't, frankly, they don't value the Constitution like we do. They're progressives. They are out there to change, fundamentally change the Constitution. Listen to those words, because that's what they want to do. We're in a time where I feel like it's similar to where we were as a nation when Abraham Lincoln was campaigning for for his position. Folks, the time is now. We're, We're running out of time in this nation. Because if we get another four years, frankly, of the judges that we find ourselves in front of, it becomes almost impossible to be able to get what I believe a fair hearing from a judge who values and recognizes the Constitution of the United States for how it's written. You know, China has a constitution. They've got a religious liberty provision. If you go look at that religious liberty provision in China, you're going to say, wow, that, that is so strong. The, the verbiage is so strong. And you look at our our verbiage in our Constitution, the Free Exercise Clause and the Establishment Clause, it it doesn't even compare in strength as it is on paper. But you're not going to be able to have a, a meeting like this in China. So it matters less what the words say on paper as much as what really matters is we the people who are going to come out and ensure, as Abraham Lincoln Uh, said back when he was running that we need to overturn not the constitution but the people who pervert it. So 
if I could, I, I hope you guys have a slide presentation. Uh, yes, you do. Fantastic. I'm going to give you a few numbers here. I'm going to go through these really quick because we've got a little short little period of time. We condense what normally is a half hour into 10 minutes as we've been going around the state doing this. It's been unbelievably successful. There's so many churches that have gotten involved. Uh, and so it's been an honor to participate with Jack and Gina and Karen England. Uh, so here we go. I want to talk about some elections. Uh, folks, I'm, you know, I'm going to get to the punchline first. The punchline is this. If you all show up and vote, we're going to overwhelm the polls. That's it. And, and frankly, folks, no fraud, no, no funny business is going to overwhelm if God's people comes out to vote. November. We've got some new, some, some new information that just came out. And, and I represent a group called the Election Integrity Project of California. By the way, you want to do something, you want to get involved, get out and be poll watchers. Get out and, and, and volunteer. Go to the Election Integrity Project's website. Talk to Gina Gleason. Go to Real Impact. Find a way that you can actually go out election day and for the many days thereafter and, and make sure that the, those who are working our elections are doing so lawfully and doing the right thing. And you can get trained. You can learn how to do this. Please do it. You want to get involved? People ask me a lot. What can we do? Well, you can't come to court. Well, I mean, you can come to court with me if you want, but you, you, you're not going to. What you can do is you can go to the polls. You can do this type of thing. Okay. But here's what we found. Just recently, we're about ready to file a, a, a lawsuit against the Secretary of State, hoping to do it this week. It might not be till early next week, but there's a problem. And when we compared... The 2022 election, the certified results, compared to the records that they show us today, we find that there's a $43,000 statewide, uh, $43,000, 43,000 vote difference in the records of what they show and they provided to us through uh, our, our election code that allows us to require that they provide us data. It doesn't match what they had in uh, the data that they had, that they certified in 2022. Scratch your head and say, why? I'm not saying that there's fraud. I'm just saying that the numbers don't match. And you know what? If the Franchise Tax Board wants me to make sure that my income matches when I put it on my, my tax records, well, I want to make sure the Secretary of State has her accounting matching it should. <laughs> Next slide, please. You hear about the Johnson Amendment. Uh, Oh, no, actually, well, here's another slide. I guess I skipped. Okay, um, you know what happened? I, I'm going to give you some other statistics that can be a little scary. But let me just jump to uh, very, the very bottom here. March 2020, a million 63 ineligible registrations of people who were registered to vote or maybe people who were dead or illegal or whatever in California. Can you, it just, it's ridiculous. In February of 2021, after the election, it, when they went back and checked, it was 1.8 million. Folks, and these are conservative numbers. I'm going to show up here, uh, you'll see the second bullet point. Almost 124,000 more votes were counted in the California's November 3rd, 2020 election than voters recorded as actually having voted in that election. Folks, we have to do something. And so that's where we, the church, we have to get out. We've got to come out. I'm begging you, volunteer. Go be a poll watcher. Go watch them count ballots. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. The next thing, uh, we talk about the Johnson Amendment. Running out of time. I've got two and a half minutes to finish, so i got to hurry. Skip over the Johnson Amendment. <laughs> Look, Johnson Amendment, we believe it's unconstitutional. And we're going to battle against the Johnson Amendment. That is the law that says, supposedly, that tries to scare pastors from talking about politics. Try to keep the pastors in the church away from issues that we care about. You care about welfare. You care about immigration. You care about uh, taxes. You care about all of the issues, gender in schools and all of this stuff. It's all politics. But we should be able to teach about it from a moral perspective, and we can, and that's what Pastor Jack does. Next slide. Here's what churches can do. I want, if, if there's pastors here, churches, folks from other churches, go back to your uh, pastor and, and share this with them. Uh, I'd be happy to send this slide to you. you can, the pastors can preach on moral issues. You can harvest hearts and then grab their 
get their ballots. Tell them to come and bring their ballots. And I think that there's some ballot gathering going on today, if I'm not mistaken. Gina will be talking about that. You get prepare voter guides. Real Impact does that. Churches, get out, get engaged. You can share uh, the biblical issues. You can even do so without endorsing a particular candidate. Register prisoners to vote. Invite candidates and elected officials. You're going to see some tonight. Um, you can provide ideological discussions on the platforms. Um, boy, there's so much that you can do as a church. Let's go to the next slide. Um, ballot gathering. This is just the idea that, you know what? They're doing it. There was an article in the AP that some of you guys may have seen. Here we are. We're out uh, doing this throughout the state for the last eight weeks or so. And the AP comes out and says, well, you know, Christians, you know, they were once against it. Now they're for it. Well, we're not really for it. But what we are for is, hey, if, if it's legal for them, then we better get engaged and we better start doing the same thing. <laughs> last slide. This is going to be my encouragement to you, I hope. Um, look at this. Pew Research did a poll. Uh, Californians who attend church or a religious service once per week, 31%. Well, if 31% of all of California's registered voters actually attend church, that's, that's about 6,855,000 voters. Think about that. In the March 24 presidential primary, there was only a 34% turnout. But there were only 7,518,000 people who came out and voted. Church, you can have a huge impact. We can have a huge impact. And let me tell you one last thing. Oh, gosh, I'm, out. I'm over time. Listen, you've got right here in Chino Valley Unified School District, you've got a major vote coming up. A few years ago, I was defending the school district. You guys might remember, let us pray. We went out, we were fighting, we were battling. We had a case ripe for the U.S. Supreme Court that, that they would have taken. We would have reversed the Establishment Clause jurisprudence, uh, jurisprudence that was really horrible. And what ended up happening was there was an election. But folks, y'all didn't show up to vote. And we lost the majority in the school board. What ended up happening? They told us, as their lawyers, new, a new school board, you have to settle the case. Oh, and by the way, you got to pay Freedom From Religion Foundation the 300 plus some odd thousand dollars that they're demanding. That wasn't this school board. That wasn't the, the school board you have now. This was a prior one. But every election counts. And right now, the entire Ninth Circuit, all of the states on the West Coast, Oregon, Washington, California, Hawaii, um, Montana, uh, Nevada, Arizona, it is illegal to have an invocation at a school board meeting. I hope we can change that soon, but it takes people getting out to vote. And a church this size, in one day, like, like we as a state, if all the Christians came out and voted, this body right here, what an impact you'll have on these local elections just by getting out to vote. God bless you. Uh, if you'd like more information... Our last slide, there's a, a deal there. You can, you can look at that and get information on us. But listen, you know what? Uh, next you're going to hear from Karen England. Uh, I, I like to, oh, Karen, she's not going to like this. Sometimes I call her Dr. Ruth. You'll, you'll get it. She's wonderful. She's so awesome. She's going to tell you about what's going on in, in the public schools, and it's going to give you even more reason to get out and vote for this local election. God bless you. Wow, good evening, everybody. This is awesome. You can go ahead and, and play the, the first video. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed, as you may be, by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. Okay, next slide. So we're going to talk tonight. Bob mentioned the lawsuit with the Freedom From Religion 
Foundation. They'll be at the school board tomorrow night if you attend. But you can go to the next slide, because I'm going to talk about exchanging the truth for a lie, because that's what's been going on when it comes to education and it comes to how we've engaged in education. And oh, this is not, actually, you're, you're not totally seeing it, but I, I'm going to go from Romans 1, 22 through 26, and it says, professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. And then it goes on, and it talks about um, how the truth of God was exchanged for lie and worship served the creator, rather the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. And that's what is going on. We are repeatedly exchanging truth, God's truth, for lies. Next slide. So Abraham Lincoln, this is a great quote where it says, the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next. And isn't that truth when you look at what's going on right now with both our leaders, everything? Next slide. Our good friend Karl Marx, the education of all children from the moment they can get along without a mother's care shall be in state institutions. We've exchanged truth for lies. Karl Marx. There was recently, uh, in the last couple of years, Pastor Jack did a podcast with Jerry Boykin, and they talked about uh, the demonic assault on um, our country and talked about how the, in 1958 the communist, the naked communist was written and they talked about, and, and General Boykin and Pastor Jack talked about it in detail about how three out of five divorces are because of pornography, the big lie of transgender ideology, um, demonic sexual abuse of the hearts and the minds and the bodies that, that we're oppressing that on our, on our, on our kids and that this is the age old battle of biblical worldview, and not just another worldview, but an anti-biblical worldview that hates the biblical worldview. And that's what's going on in our education system. Next slide. So in the uh, Naked Communist, this was in 1958, number 24, 25, and 26. Keep this in mind when I talk about what's going on in Chino Valley Unified. So they eliminate laws. This was written in 1958, everybody. Eliminate laws governing obscenity by calling them censorship. They call me a censor, a book banner. Violation of free speech, free press. Break down cultural standards. Present homosexuality as normal and natural. Next slide. The responsibility for us, it's on us to, reserve, to, to keep our republic. And I know Pastor Jack talks a lot, next slide, about Ben Franklin and how when he was leaving the Constitutional Convention and was asked, what kind of government have you given us? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. That means there's something that we're supposed to do to keep it. They really resonate deeply for me when I look at what's going on in our schools. Are we keeping this republic? Are we engaging? Are we doing more than just showing up every four years and voting? Next slide. School boards are not just an election on the ballot that is, you can kind of go or do. I would argue, I wouldn't argue with Pastor Jack about it, but I would argue it's probably the most important vote you cast because they have so much power and it's so close to our children and a majority of children are in the public school seats. So the influence you have when you go out and do your school board elections, next slide, is crucial, absolutely crucial. So the na na this is, I'm going to talk about the uh, exchanging truth for a lie. The National School Board Association, which is the big progressive organization, here's what they say the role of a school board is. It's to be accessible to everyone in the community and is accountable for the performance of the schools in the district. It doesn't say it's accountable or accessible to just the parents whose kids are enrolled there this year. It's for everyone. 
The school board is the community's education watchdog, ensuring that taxpayers get their most for their tax dollars. This is the National School Board Association. I know the lie is you're homeschooling or you don't have kids in the district or so you shouldn't vote and you shouldn't have a say about the books. That's a lie. Next slide. National School Board Association. Here's now what the California School Board Association and they're a pretty evil organization. These are their exact words. The role of the school board is to ensure that school districts are responsive to the values, beliefs, and priorities of the community. Our community here in Chino is different than San Francisco. It's going to be different than New York City. That is the whole point of having a local school board so close to the people. You, each and every one of you, should be voting in school board and walking precincts in those races. The decisions that that school board makes, and if you go to this church, you know some of them that, that are being made, it's crazy. And these are the kids that are going to grow up and be the decision makers of tomorrow. So you can, you can homeschool your kids, and our, my, even my grandkids are, are being homeschooled. But it's a republic if we can keep it. And we have such a, a blessed form of government that requires our involvement. Next. So exchanging truth for a lie. A year ago, the local school district passed a policy that I came out and helped with, and you all came out, and we um, created something. The school board passed it. It made it easy to challenge books. Next slide. And I want to show you what Enough. the next, here we go. There is no pornography in our schools. And let me repeat that for those who are watching, so I'm going to look at the camera. There is no pornography in our schools. Mrs. Shaw and some speakers here will try to convince you otherwise, but their opinions aren't facts. What we have happening here is puppeteering, and the people pulling the strings are Karen England and Jack Hitz. I know, that was funny, because I don't even live in the state. Um, <laughs> Yeah, all sorts of stuff. I, I just had to play that because, uh, again, the community is supposed to be involved in the local school board, and the local school board is supposed to reflect its community. So we passed that policy. So this last week, we had 25 books challenged in 20, 25 books in 12 different schools challenged. Some of those books are in more than one school. And I'm going to quickly go through them. I had to kind of get this approved. This is not the worst of the worst. I, I wanted to deliver the worst of the worst, but I'm not. So you can decide if she's right and if we want to live by her values in the public school or if what our school board did is right. Next slide. Alice on the outside. This is one that was challenged this week. Those are the schools it's in. Immediately heard from the elementary school, it was removed. Policy worked. Policy worked because we put it in place, the school board was responsive. We're still waiting to hear from those other schools. Next slide. Glass Castle. These are the three schools it's in, still waiting to hear what they're going to do with it. Next slide. Here's just some of what is in this book that she says there is no porn in this school district. Let me look at the camera and tell you there's no porn. Your tax dollars bought this. Next slide. The bluest eye. Junior high, Chino Hills High, Don Lugo, which, by the way, Don Lugo has a lot of really bad books. They have not even responded. I will say there were a few principals that immediately responded and said, I agree, we apologize, it's been removed. That's how it should be. That's how they should respond, because 14-year-olds have no business reading this. That one book, this is the first district where I found that book in an elementary school. So, whose worldview should a school board reflect? You're competing with the Freedom From Religious Foundation. Are you content letting them govern and pour into the children using your tax dollars in your schools? Next slide. So as soon as we passed the, they passed the policy, 
they immediately, uh, they contacted the school district, and they said, well, we want, we want the Bible banned. And this is an article that came out, and it's kind of funny because there's more than one book in the Bible. So I was like, well, which book? And, you know, I mean, we, could, we could get kind of funny with it, but um, they didn't even read the policy, so they aren't even uh, allowed to challenge it. But they challenged it. Um, it's perfectly constitutional, and we're removing porn. Next slide. This is something that happened today, and I added it. The school psychologists are at a conference, and here's what the doctor is talking to all the public school psychologists about. He will talk about the extremist groups attempting to take over public school systems in California, talking about Chino Valley Unified. Our tax dollars are training the rest of the school counselors about how extreme Chino Unified is because we want parental notification and we don't want porn in the schools. Next slide. Here's the conference they were at. This is what was handed out. This is part of their slideshow. Oh my goodness, Chino Valley adopted a parental notification policy. Extreme. Male superintendent keeps his job. In another place, they were saying that it's sexist. It, he kept his job because he's a male, not because he's good or that he's been at the district forever. Next slide. So this is, if you want to join our mailing list, I just had to throw that in there because we will we'll be at the school board to, meeting tomorrow and then we will keep you updated and we do send out a lot of stuff on the books. If you want to work with us to remove porn from the school district, this is a way that you can financially partner with us. And last but not least, I really want to encourage you that your involvement and I know a majority of you do not vote for school board or in the past have not, because I know what it's like. I'm hoping that you'll do it now. You must vote and work to get these school board members elected. It's your community, your values, your beliefs that are supposed to be governing your local school board. It's not an extension of the administration or teachers union. It's an extension of we the people. So the stakes are high. Our children are depending on your involvement. So please engage in the Chino Valley Unified School District School Board meeting and in the race. We need to keep those seats and need to keep our values and move forward with what Sonia Shaw has already started to do. So with that, I'm going to introduce my good friend and we've been traveling around. This was her, one of her great ideas the Lord gave her, and it was to come back to California and travel the state, and we've been really well received, and so I want to introduce you. You guys know her. She's the director of Real Impact, and that is Gina Gleason. Thank you, that was nice. Well, hello, everyone. It's been a while. So glad to be with you tonight because this has been a dream of ours for months. We've put this together, we've prayed about it, we've uh, talked to pastors and people across the state to get out the vote this election. Pastor Jack and I were just so determined to step outside of what we normally do, to be creative and to help people to understand their responsibility, responsibilities as Christians and how we can really make a difference this election year. So I want to talk about election resources and some of those things that Real Impact offers. But first, I want to talk about our school district here in Chino Valley. We have a fantastic school board. And we have fantastic school board members sitting in these seats right now, making policies that affect your children. As a matter of fact, our policies are so good that other school districts pick up on them and use them for their own district. And so, that's kudos to our school board members. Our policies are so good that Gavin Newsom hates them. Our policies are so good that our attorney general has sued our school board. But they brought us policies such as a parental notification policy. You probably have all heard about it, but if you haven't, it's a policy that says that if your child is acting out as the opposite gender, while the child is at school, parents should be notified. It doesn't stop the child from acting out. 
It doesn't do anything other than to say to the parents, this is what's happening with your child and you should know about it. And so I think it's a good policy, but nonetheless, we have a lawsuit and we're in the court right now. We have another policy that says we should not have porn in our school libraries. Does everybody agree with that? No porn? Well, that's thanks to a smart, logical, uh, rational school board. And the problem is, we have people who oppose these views in our own district. Next slide, please. We attend a lot of school board meetings, we watch a lot of school board meetings, and we see the same characters over and over stepping up to oppose some of the school policies that have been introduced by Sonia Shaw and the other board members. And it's pretty ridiculous to see that a lot of the people, people opposing these policies are actually teachers. And you wouldn't know, I mean, we all love teachers, don't we? We have friends and family who teach. They're the great people. But there are some who are not so great. There are some who do not share your worldview. There are some who are working very, very hard to sexualize your children. They're not ashamed of it. They don't hide it. They stand up before the whole world and they say they want porn in our schools. It's pretty disgusting, actually. All you have to do is show up at a school board meeting and you'll see who these people are. You'll see who these teachers are. And they've been working very hard and they're very organized. One of the leaders in this movement to stop our precious school board is our local teachers union, the Associated Teachers of Chino, ACT, Associated Chino, Chino teachers. And um, this is what they've done here. You're going to see right here as election time comes up, they've introduced candidates that they want to replace our good school board members with these three gentlemen here. They are being endorsed by the school board member, a school board um, union, teachers union, and their names are here, and they're, they're proud to be endorsed. But one thing you should know about this teachers union and these candidates, they're so radical that they were not even ashamed to announce on this flyer here on the left that they had partnered with the Los Angeles LGBT Center to come out and teach all the teacher, uh, teachers how to canvass your neighborhoods, how to get out the vote. These are the most radical people coming in from Los Angeles, working hand in hand with our local teachers union. So when you see these yard signs out every election year as we do, and you see these three gentlemen here with their yard signs, you're gonna see this emblem on their yard sign as a reminder to you of what these men stand for. So you need to talk to your family and friends about that, and I'm gonna provide some resources to help you. Next slide, please. Here again, we have these teachers who are just so proudly here on the left, you see this, fly this flyer. They come to school board meetings with their colors and their flags and their signs, and what are they doing? They're fighting. They're not, a hot, they're not afraid to announce that they're fighting us with these good policies. And what they're doing also, I think, is, is, is pretty devious. They're also inviting our high school students to join them in this fight. As a matter of fact, this middle flyer right here is a recruitment flyer for our high school students to come and join this teachers union and these three candidates to come walk door and door to door in your neighborhood. Then, finally, all the way here on the left, we have the California Teachers Association representing the entire state of California, all the teachers, who has come out to volunteer for these same three candidates. The teachers union is not the same union that you and I grew up with. It's very different nowadays. We need to be aware of that. We need to know who is challenging our worldview 
And as a matter of fact, not only do they challenge it, they push back against it. And they're making progress. We need your help. Next slide, please. So what we have here is, uh, here on the, the, uh, the left, is a um, post from one of our local high schools. They have a uh, gen uh, gender sexuality alliance on campus. And these kids are being indoctrinated, sexually indoctrinated. There's no quicker way to lose our children than to confuse them about their gender. And that's what's happening in our public schools nowadays, even in Chino Valley. As a matter of fact, you're gonna see this, I'm gonna play this video for you in just one second. Ayala, GSA, I'm right here, Selena Estes, I'm telling you, keep fighting the fight, you don't let them scare you away. If they're taking stuff away, they're stopping things, you keep on pushing forward. We don't go back in the closet, honey. We gotta keep marching forward and fighting for our rights and for our future. I believe in you guys, and I know you guys are gonna hold it down. Okay, so you couldn't hear that very well, but you could see down at the bottom, it's the Ayala GSA Club. This is how far it's gotten. If you're not paying attention to the school board meetings, you don't know what's happening. You, don't, people, you could tell people, you go home and tell people. They're not gonna believe you. It's really hard to believe. Even when I see this, I get shocked. And this man who dresses as a woman is telling our GSA club from Ayala High School to not give up. You know why? Because what happened recently is there was a planned field trip during the daytime taking a group of kids to a gay pride event from our local school district. President Shaw stopped it. But they're really upset. But you know what, I'm really upset too. We should all be really upset. So this, this man is telling the kids, don't give up. Fight for your rights. Your rights to be LGBT. Your rights to dress as the opposite gender. And it is happening. You know what's happening. It's happening in our schools. So what we need is for you to care enough to pay attention to what's going on in our school districts. You need to show up at the school board meetings, even if you don't say anything. Show up, pray. Our school board members need your prayers. If that's the only thing you can do, please do it. Especially for our president, Sonia Shaw. So like Pastor Jack mentioned, tomorrow night there is a school board meeting at 6 o'clock. The teachers union, the activists have organized our high school students to meet at the local park and march, show up at the school board meeting, and make a big to-do about losing their rights. I bet you some parents don't even know that their kids are joining this march. Most parents, I'm sure, do not know. So you need to be there. And I'm really saddened, I'm really saddened that we happen to be the only church in this Chino Valley that is doing anything about this. You know that Real Impact has been providing you with resources, information about legislation, elections. For years we've been doing this. Do you think any other church has ever asked even one time how to do what we're doing and to help their fellowship or their congregation to do what we're doing and inform their, their people? No, not even one time. That has to change. This is our community. We have to stand up for our children. We are not San Francisco, we are the Chino Valley. And we gotta stop this.
Go and see who these teachers are that are indoctrinating your children, your neighbors, your nieces, your nephews. They don't hide it. There's no shame. And it's just so very disgusting to hear them say what they say at these school board meetings. You will be shocked. Tomorrow night promises to be a very shocking night. I dread going tomorrow night. I do not want to do this. But I feel compelled. I want to protect our children, children that I will, I'll never meet. You won't know them. But aren't our children worth saving? Yeah. So with that said, I just love children, and I know you do too. So let's talk about this election now to change, change the tone a little bit. Next slide, please. Real Impact has created this first time ever that we've created a statewide voter guide. And so we've sent questionnaires to all of the candidates, Congressional, Senate, Assembly, and um, we are just so proud of all the work that, that we have put into this. So you can get a flyer in the courtyard or in the bag that you were just handed. And you can open up that QR code and that will lead to our website. And you'll get a lot of the candidates did not answer, but a lot did. But this is the beginning. Every year it's going to grow more and more. You can share this with family and friends across the state. Because you should know who you're voting for and what they stand for. Those that did not answer, they are hiding. Right? They should be able to tell voters what they stand for, but that's not the case all the time. But we've also created local voter guides. We have many school board races, not just the Chino Valley, which is very important, but we have from school boards all across the state. As a matter of fact, we created many of them ourselves. But do you know this year, I think we probably have at least six or seven local voter guides that were created by other churches that I trained how to do that. So that's also on our... And that's going to grow every year because I'm determined to make sure that we get voter guides for every school district and every church is paying attention to what's going on in their district. So you have that flyer in your package and I want you to be able to share it with family and friends to take it out to your neighborhood. But thank you so much for being here and we really appreciate you coming out tonight because we are just so passionate about what's going on in our culture and saving our kids. So thank you very much. God bless you all. And so what, oh, there he is. First of all, you guys, I want, um, in fact, are there men here? I want men to stand up. Men, stand up. So guys, listen, if I could cut her in pieces and put a little bit of her on you guys and have it grow, have the part of Gina grow on you. Guys, listen, I don't know what the deal is, but most of the warriors that I know that are on the front lines, um, like Gina Gleason, are women. And I understand a man's going to say, I got to bring in the bread, I got to bring in the money. I get that. But watch, I'll put this to the test. Tomorrow night, school board meeting. The topic will be the preservation of a child's innocence. That Jesus said, if you offend a child, it will be better for you that if you had never been born than to face me in the day of judgment. So, as believers, we don't panic and we don't freak out. Jesus is going to take care of everything in the end. But in the meantime, we're supposed to stand for what's right. Gentlemen, standing. You can show up tomorrow night, or you can stay home and watch the Broncos play the Saints. And you're going to choose your value system tomorrow night. And I would, I would encourage you to come and be a saint <laughs> and, and show up tomorrow night. You don't have to say anything. Men, men, lead the way. Men, start leading. What, let, let's, let's, let's give these women a break and have some men uh, take, take a lead on this. But Gina's been a warrior. 
We've been fighting together for decades, and um, so I just want to say one more thing, and you touched on it, and then we need to go down our big list, mm -hmm. and that is, um, um, I, it breaks my heart what Gina just said about the churches in this region. They're, they're, ap they're, 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 they're absent, uh, and I don't understand it. And I don't understand the people that attend those churches that it's their kids that are being manipulated and mentally raped and all kinds of things. And the church they go to, their pastor never says a thing. And I just read today, Ezekiel 33, where it says that God says, I have set my men on the wall to blow the trumpet of warning when evil's approaching. And if you don't blow the trumpet, I will require of you, your blood, because you didn't warn the people that evil was coming. And pastors don't care. Uh, even in my notes, I just wrote here, uh, make, make mention of the loser pastors. Uh, that, that's what I, if, if a pastor's not blowing the trumpet of warning in an hour like this, they will never blow it. I'm telling you right now, whatever pastor, whatever church, if, if, if they would have announced the warning by now, they're not going to do it. It's tragic. But let's get down to business, yep. right? Chino Valley, Unified? Is this where we're going to start or yep, no? But, but I'm going to do that. Oh, okay, good. good. Orange and then you do I'll do the blue. Uh, yeah. Okay, so then so you We're going to follow the plan. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to invite candidates out. And they're going to have a chance to introduce themselves to you. So go ahead and take a seat. And let's start by in, um, inviting out our Chino Valley Unified School District candidates. These brave men. Are yes. they standing up for you? Come on out, John Cervantes, James Naw, Andrew Cruz, and the San Bernardino County Board of Education candidate, Maria Isabel Arias. Uh, what an honor. Thank you, Gina. Everybody here, church family, my name is John Cervantes, and I'm your candidate for Chino Valley Unified School District, trustee area number one. You guys know this, but we're in a battle right now, and the prize is our children. Sitting it out is not an option. We're all called to do something, so here I am. One person, but here I am. Thank you. I'm fighting for education. I want to see us get back to basics, reading, writing, math. Provide vocational education for those that are not going to go to college. Let's give some options out there. Safety. As a retired Chino police officer and a school resource officer, I know how to keep our kids and our campuses safe. And most importantly in this battle that we're fighting, is parental rights, transparency. There is no way on my watch, together, we're gonna allow anybody to make decisions for your children without you knowing about it. That's not gonna happen. So please, remember, John Cervantes, Cervantes for schoolboard.com, I wanna earn your vote. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you everyone, um, brothers and sisters, joining us in prayers, especially prayers, such time like this. Uh, we have never experienced time like this in entire my tenure as a board member for the last 16 years. We have to stand up, stand up for our parental rights, but more than so, the future of our country. The darkness the covered by the, the government is trying to take our children away from us. We must, we must stand up and save our children. They are our future. I will, I will love 
and protect all the children in our district, born and unborn. And let's make it a clear statement. By winning this election, all of us to the state of California that our parents matter and our Christian, Christians will stand up against evil. And this will start something bigger than before. There's a state called New Mexico. I think this is the time to start a new California, starting from Chino Valley. Thank you. I still want to continue to be part of the A-team. And um, I've served 12 years. And hopefully in, that I will be able to serve another four years. We, we stand strong. And all of us, we participate in the arena. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I hope and pray that you guys are all well today. My name is Maria Isabel Arias. I am a parent, an advocate, and a person of faith. I'm here to ask for your prayers and for your vote this November 2024. I am the runner-up for the San Bernardino County Board of Education, Area C, which covers Chino, Chino Hills, Fontana, Ontario, and a piece of Rancho. I am the only person of faith running against the incumbent who has been endorsed by Planned Parenthood. So we need to get her off her seat because I believe she's against children because she, she's okay with aborting our kids. So it's a strong fight, but I'm here to be the person of faith to look after your children, to be the voice for those children that need our help. As you can tell, I'm the only big mama here, but I am a proud mother, and I will fight for you, and I will fight for our children, and I will fight, and I will pray, because I am a woman of faith, and prayer works. I am fighting against Goliath, but in the name of Jesus, I can fight this fight, and with your help as well. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you for your prayers. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. That is so great. Oh, my goodness. All right. So listen, you can start welcoming these as I bring them out, call them out, Temecula. Dr. Joseph Komorowski, area number four, come on out. Congressional seats, congressional, listen to this, come on out. Mark, or Mike Cargyle, number 35, district. Eric King, 38, and Scott Baugh, 47. State Senate, Elizabeth Wong Allaires, and Carlos Garcia, come on out. Want to go for it first? Hi there, I'm Joseph, a former Army Ranger, currently a tenure professor at Mount San Antonio College. I teach logic full-time, and I teach your kids how not to be brainwashed, manipulated, and indoctrinated, and that's why Governor Newsom hates me. Instead of running from evil, I run towards it. That's how I was trained. And the reason I'm standing on this stage is because Jesus Christ is Lord over every square inch of reality. <laughs> Two months ago, I was in a hospital and I was paralyzed from the waist down. Now I'm standing on stage. There's nothing gonna stop me. And I hope that the Lord rightfully restores me to my seat in Temecula. I was a school board president for a year and a half. I kept on all my campaign promises. I immediately came in, condemned racism, banned CRT, had a USA flag only policy, California flag only policy. We banned pervasive profanity, obscenity, vulgarity, pornography, erotica from all core curriculum, supplemental material, library books, and on and on. I banned 5G towers from our school campuses from being re-extended. So I'm an honest politician and um, yeah. I've campaigned three times within two years because of a, a radical 
leadership of the teachers union, not only in Temecula, but Marietta and Menifee all donated money to, for my recall campaign. So I was recalled and then I immediately said, hey, I'm running again, I'll see you in November. So God bless you for your time. The spiritual warfare is real and I love God, country and family. And you can visit me at DRK, the number four, tbusd.com, praise God. Good evening, folks. I need you to get your phone out or something you can write on. I am Mike Cargyle, and I'm running for Congress in this district. This is the 35th district of California. I'm running against a lady named Norma J. Torres.com. Norma J. Torres.com. But listen, I want you to write this down Norma for the number four Congress.com. Norma for Congress. Dot com. I believe my opponent may be the Guatemalan connection for the child trafficking that President Trump references. Know those 320,000 missing children? These are those kids. I need your help to save these kids. And all I'm asking you to do is vote Mike Cargyle for Congress. Vote Mike Cargyle for Congress. And if you can't remember that, Remember this, smile, it's Cargyle. <laughs> Isaiah 6, 8. I hear the, vo the voice of the Lord saying, who should I send? Who will represent us? I say, send me. We will not stop when we get there because our job as Christians is to go disciple to all nations. And I will encourage you to do three things. To humble ourselves, always be honest, and open our mouth. We will take our country back. Air Chief of Congress. <laughs> Uh, thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Scott Ball. I'm running for uh, the 47th Congressional District in coastal Orange County. And uh, I'm going to tell you about my uh, favorite my favorite political story in the scriptures, and that's the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah had a calling. It was a political calling. And of course, he uh, got dispensation from the king. Well, first of all, he got his heart right. Then he got dispensation. He put a little political campaign together. He went off to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And what did the opposition do? What did the enemy do? They mocked him. They lied about him. And then they tried to injure him. Sounds like modern political campaigning to me, right? <laughs> and let me say, why did he rebuild those walls in record time? Because he asked all the Jewish families, just focus on the wall in front of your own house. Just take care of your own problems like you're doing here in Chino. Well, our walls are broken down in this country. Let's rebuild the walls that secure our border. And, and, yeah. and don't, don't let them call you a racist. America's the most generous country in the history of the world. We allow legal immigration and we need a wall. We need protection from illegal immigration. The last four years, they've allowed rapists and murderers to come into our country and roam free. So let's continue together to rebuild the walls of this country, rebuild the walls of our educational systems, our university, and our culture. God bless you. Thank you very much. Good evening, church. My name is Elizabeth Wong Allers. I'm running for California State Senate. So that means Sacramento. That means California legislature. Um, so all of those laws that differentiate California from Florida or Idaho or Tennessee, that's coming from Sacramento. So my motto is love, lives, liberty, and law. It starts with love and your lives matter. Liberty operates when good laws promote peace and prosperity. That's what we want for California, for California families, for California churches, for California children. Um, I am a mother of six children with my husband, Ron. We've been married 34 years. Not sure where he is, but he's here somewhere. Yay. Yay, Ron. So we've got four girls, two boys, and um, I homeschooled them all. I've got, we've been missionaries around the world. We're in this to fight for California. Thank you.
Good evening, my name is Carlos Garcia and I'm running for District 29 State Senate. I'm currently a city councilman for the city of Upland and I'm gonna tell you that I'm not a politician. I always tell people that I am a servant leader, I'm here to serve and it's the only reason why I got into politics because I'm not gonna sit back and allow for this dysfunction in Sacramento to continue any longer. I am supporting public safety, I'm supporting our veterans, our business community, making sure that government is held accountable for every tax dollar that we spend, period. And I'm also gonna tell you, thank you. I'm also gonna tell you that I am running as the only public safety candidate. And what that means is, I have all of California law enforcement, San Bernardino County law enforcement, including Sheriff Dykus, Sheriff Bianco, all endorsing me to make a change once and for all. And lastly, I ask you to share the message with everyone you know, because we need class of 2024 to get up there and make some changes to Sacra Sacramento. Well, thank you, everyone. And now we're going invite, to invite out our assembly candidates. We're going to have Michelle uh, Martinez, Nick Wilson, Jessica Martinez, Leticia Castellano, Raul Ortiz Jr., and Scott Piotr, come on out. Good evening, my name is Michelle Martinez. I'm running for California State Assembly. I'm actually running with my full name, Michelle de Rosario Martinez, because my grandmother impacted my life. She taught me to pray the Our Father first and foremost when I was a kid, and I learned it in Spanish. <laughs> but I'm running for the next generation. What I've seen is that the American spirit that made this country what it is has been eroded. I see it in my own family. My parents came from Peru in the 1960s legally to chase the American dream, and they were able to get it. And as I and my husband married for 21 years, when after that same dream, we were able to obtain it. But I see what's happened to my younger brother and my younger sister, and they haven't been able to obtain the American dream, the real American dream of excellence, of liberty, of freedom and the pursuit of happiness. So I am running so that future generations will have that, especially the freedom of religion. So I ask that you would all uh, join me. God bless you all. Good evening, I'm so grateful to be here. My name is Nick Wilson. Uh, I'm so grateful to Gina, to Pastor Jack, and to all of you who showed up when you didn't have to, it gives me hope. I'm a retired police officer. I medically retired after 13 years. And I think that uh, after being a, a narcotic and gang detective, it is without equivocation my opinion that the biggest gang rests in the governor's office, the California Attorney General, <laughs> and the assembly members who have yeah. abandoned the people that they represent. Yep. We need accountability. I'm running on public safety. I'm running on the cost of living, homelessness, and most importantly, parental rights, because nothing is more important than our children. If you live, if you live in Chino, Pomona, Ontario, Montclair, and Upland, I'd be representing you in Sacramento. And I won't be like the rest who have abandoned their oath. I know that we're up against a political machine, but our God is so much bigger than any political machine. So thank you for God, country, and our children. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, uh, Pastor Jack, and thank you, Gina Gleason from Real Impact, for inviting us to come out here tonight. Um, this is such an important election. Number one, I, I did take some notes because I don't want to forget anything. But um, you can go, if you want to learn more about my campaign or about me, uh, go to Martinez. ForAssembly.org, MartinezForAssembly.org, and I felt the Lord prompted me to say, "Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Be courageous." Yes. Okay. God said in His Word in the Bible, for each day, 365 times, "Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid." Okay, real quick. 
I'm running on family, faith, and freedom. I'm a mom, a wife of a veteran. I'm a, I homeschooled. Uh, I served on the city council and as mayor pro tem for the city of Whittier. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you want to ask anybody about how I did, you can ask uh, Pastor Don, uh, Dom, because he does the police and he was in our police force. I'm going to ask you one thing. Vote early. Vote early. Let us dominate at the polls. Don't allow the left to create the impression that they are winning. Yes. I'll just tell you two more things. Uh, my opponent is listed on the Freedom Index as having a zero percentage of voting in alignment with the U.S. Constitution. And she has 100% percentage of voting with Planned Parenthood. Okay, so we're in a, a battle of good and evil. Remember that when you go to the polls. Okay, God bless you. Thank you all very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Leticia Castillo. I'm a lifelong Inland Empire resident. I earned a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and I'm currently a licensed mental health professional in private practice. But God calls us out of our comfort zone and into the battlefield, and that's where I'm at now. So I'm currently running for State Assembly District 58 because the current Democrat policies are ruining our state. We all pretty much want the same things, safer communities, lower prices on groceries and energy so we can all afford to live here, and we want to protect our parental rights, our family values, and our, we want quality education for our kids, right? But only 60% of the state votes. We are allowing 20% of the state to determine our elections. I'm pretty sure a lot of you didn't know that. So we have to do better. We definitely have to do better, and we have to get people out to vote. The, in Sacramento, the majority uh, Democrats don't have the same values as their Democrat constituents. And what ends up happening is that they make laws and pass policies that affect us negatively, all of us, including their voting base, because they don't know any better. So my word to you is that when you get your ballots and you see someone on the ballot, and they have a D next to their name. Just remember that that D stands for Diablo and vote for somebody else. Well, I'm Reverend Raul Ortiz, Jr., and I'm running for District 64 State Assembly. I represent the cities of La Habra, La Mirada, South Whittier, Norwalk, Downey, Bell Gardens, Bell, and Cudahy. I'm happily married. I have eight children. One of my sons turned 13 today. I have six grandchildren, one on the way. My quiver is full. Uh, <laughs> so... You can reach me at RaulOrtizForAssembly.com, RaulOrtiz4, F-O-R, Assembly.com. And what's on the ballot right now is not Republican or Democrat. It's not a donkey versus an elephant. What's on the ballot literally is a lamb versus a serpent. Good versus evil, dark versus light. And we must vote our biblical values. And we, together we will make California golden again in Jesus' name. Tough act to follow. My, na <laughs> My name is Scott Piotta. I'm running for uh, Assembly District 73. That's Irvine, Costa Mesa, and Tustin. How many people have heard of Benjamin Rush? Yeah. Okay, so for the rest of us who went to public school, he's one of our founding fathers, signer of the Declaration. He had a famous quote. He was accused of being an aristocrat and a Democrat. And he says, I'm neither. I'm a Christocrat. That's how, that's how I look at it. My modern-day way of saying that is, I'm a Christian, I'm a conservative, and I'm a Republican in that order. I'm running for assembly. My, I've lived in the district for 30 years. I'm an architect, I'm a dad, I'm a husband. My opponent does not even live in the district, Cotty Petrie Norris. Her, you've heard of Tampon Tim? 
All right, well, she authored that bill here in California requiring tampons in boys' bathrooms up and down the state. That's who we're dealing with. Her two favorite issues, abortion and climate change. We need to change it. The assembly is the people's house. We change that. Every two years, we can throw every single one of them out. That's what we need to do this time. Can you hear me? Okay, we're almost done. You guys have been amazing. Um, from the city of Brea, Bill Klofstad, come on out. Greet him. From Huntington Beach, City Council candidates Chad Williams, Don Kennedy. Rancho Cucamonga, City Council, Luis Santina. Chino Valley Fire Board, John Diamanco. And serving this city for 30 years, Mayor Eunice Iola. Come on out. How y'all doing? Yeah. Hi, church family. I'm Bill Klofstad. I'm a business owner. I'm a veteran. And I'm running in a large uh, race for city council in the city of Brea. My wife, Fran, I see you there. Hi, love. <laughs> um, we, we run businesses. We know how to run businesses. I'm bringing business innovation to the city of Brea. Uh, there's a lot of change that needs to be made in Brea, and I'm the guy that wants to do it. I got my sleeves rolled up, and I want to help make a difference. So remember Bill Klofstad, Bill for Brea. Thank you so much. Hey, church family, Chad Williams here, Navy SEAL veteran and <laughs> pastor. And you might remember, I've spoken here a couple times before. Running for city council in Huntington Beach with my running mate, Don Kennedy and Butch Twining, who can't be here tonight. And we have a very important clerk position we're trying to fill. Lisa Lane Barnes, you can remember her like Lois Lane or keeping us in the patriotic lane. I'll share this with you. One of my favorite quotes by C.S. Lewis, he says, enemy occupied territory. That is what this world is. But Christianity is the story about how our rightful king has landed, you might say in disguise, and now he's calling us all to take part in his great campaign of sabotage. The way we take part in that campaign of sabotage is overthrowing the plans of the enemy of our soul and that kingdom of darkness. And the way we do that is by taking a stand for righteousness. Yeah. So Huntington Beach has kind of built up a reputation for doing so. In fact, we recently passed an ordinance against Governor Newsom's AB 1955. We passed an ordinance. It's a parent's right to know city. Because it is, in fact, it is a God-given right to know. And so we're running up against three leftists that love Newsom. And I don't know if they have any love for the children. We know what Jesus says, better for you to wrap a millstone around your neck than to lead one of these little ones astray. Our opponents are all supported by Planned Parenthood. And Newsom has no love for us in Huntington Beach. We have his attention. And he can't keep Huntington Beach out of his mouth. Wrapping up one of his speeches saying, Huntington Beach is exhibit A for all that is wrong with housing in the state of California. <laughs> I think we all know better. Governor Newsom, you are exhibit A for all that is wrong with the state of California. And so we're taking a stand for righteousness in Huntington Beach. We have a great opportunity to really sweep our council. It's going to be 7-0 if you get the three of us on. I realize you guys, most of you don't live in Huntington, but you all know somebody that does. So please reach out to them. Let them know. It's going to be a great opportunity November 5th for our nation, for our state, on our city council in HB. It's going to be 7-0 and his newsome threesome. They've got to go. One last thing. Can we all put a fist up in the air? And on the count of three, I want one is to shout fight three times. One, two, three, fight, 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 woo! <clears throat> wow. That's why in our meet and greets, we have him bat last because that's a tough act to follow. My name's Don Kennedy. 
I am proud to run with Chad Williams and our running mate, Butch Twining. My father always told me, he said, Don, you tell me with whom you walk, and I will tell you who you are. And as I said, I am honored to stand next to Chad Williams, shoulder to shoulder, and Butch Twining. We are in a fight, good versus evil. Let me tell you a little bit about who I am so you know my heart. I've been married 30 years to an incredible lady. I'm a man of faith. We've raised three kids. God spoke to me four years ago in repetition when he presented me with Philippians 4-6. I thought it was for my friend who was scheduled to get a kidney transplant. Little did I know, when he gave me that verse two times in one day, I had looked it up and saw it in a book, spelled it wrong, and I said, why did I even write that down? Then it was presented to me an hour later. What I found out, he knew it was coming. Two, a month or so later, my wife was diagnosed with all kinds of cancers and health. He not only spoke to me, but he listened to me as he's healed and cured and restored her. Brain cancer, lung cancer, thyroid cancer, and she's had clear scans. My heart is open and I stand before you humbly. I am asking for your prayers because I believe in the power of prayer and the strength in numbers. So we need your prayers here in Huntington Beach. If you want to learn about me, you can go to Kennedy. 4HB.com, but I'm not here to promote myself. I'm here to say I'm thankful that I'm surrounded by the Lord, surrounded by the heart of God, and I am humbled to stand before you. So take a look. If you can support us, tell your friends. Butch Twining, let me touch on him. He's another man of faith. He's a, a family man, a solid man. We're businessmen. He's our hometown hero. He's a fighter. We're going to take all three seats. Tell your friends, anybody you know on Huntington Beach, Williams, Kennedy, Twining, we're asking for your vote. God bless and thank you for your time. God is good Amen. all the time. Good evening, brothers and sisters. My name is Luis Satina. You probably heard me on the radio. I'm running for Rancho Cucamonga City Council District 1. Why am I running? I'm running because our families are in peril. I'm running because the truth, the truth is now under arrest. There are things that need to be said, and they not only need to be said on the national level, it needs to start at a local level. Many of you know who I am. I'm a married man with six kids, pro-life, pro-family, pro-Second Amendment endorsed by the CRPA. I'm endorsed by the CRA, the California Republican Assembly. It's time for change. And it's time to start at the local level. My beloved Rancho Cucamonga, and many of you may know people who live in Rancho Cucamonga, please call them and tell them that Luis Satina's on the ballot because they're coming after me. My beloved Rancho Cucamonga has gone astray. Climate action plan, compassionate resolution, electric fire truck, $5.2 million dog park with no restroom. The city manager quotes Darwin. Who quotes Darwin? <laughs> Ask yourself that. Who does that? There's nothing wrong with bringing God back into civics. Lord knows this wonderful country of ours wouldn't be what it is if it didn't have God's hand on it, right? I'm running and my biggest enemy are the rhino Republicans. That's who we have to go after and change things. And we're gonna do it inch by inch, step by step in each county in California and get this country back, get this state back and win these elections so we can make a difference for our families, so we can make a difference for the future for our children. Our children, their innocence is being challenged. And God bless Pastor Jack and God bless this church because you're warriors for Christ. Please, Luis Satina, L-U-I-S-C-E-T-I-N-A dot com. I'm up against it a big machine, an establishment machine. But guess what? We have them on their knees. And we have them on their knees because we have God on our side, Jesus Christ. 
God bless you, brothers and sisters. Please pray. Pray that I stay focused, that I stay true to my cause, and that I never, never wander. God bless you. Thank you. I'd like to thank Pastor Jack and Calvary Chapel for inviting me here. My name is John DeMonico, and I'm running for re-election for the Chino Valley Fire Board. And uh, <clears throat> you know, hard to compete with a lot of the people up here on the stage because the fire district is a small, singularly focused on one thing, and that's fire, fire services and medical services. And up here with congressmen, state assembly, state senators, council members. but. Uh, one of the reasons I'm running is I've been on a fire board for 18 years, and uh, the union has decided to go after me. Don't know why, but they decided to go after me, the fire union. They have spent a lot of money, upwards of $100,000, to uh, support my opponent. And you can tell who my opponent is. His signs are, they're not signs, they're banners. They're four by eight banners all over the city. It's a lot of money being spent. In for 20,000 voters that are in my district. But uh, enough of that, and, and not to belabor that, but all I want to tell you is that uh, I'm dedicated to the community. I'm dedicated to service. I'm a United States Navy veteran. I did two tours to Vietnam. Yeah. I went to the Sea of Japan when the Pueblo was captured. Then I got out of the Navy and continued to dedicate my life to the service. I became a firefighter and moved up through the ranks. I've been a fire chief of two different cities. I've been the incident commander on large incidents. And I think one of the reasons my opponents don't like me is that I know too much. They can't lie to me. Cannot lie to me. They tried it before. But I ask you to support me. Follow the money. Don't let the fire union buy this election. But it's all about money. And, it's, and, and, if you let, and if they buy this election, your money's going to go to, serv or to pay raises, not services. Keep the money for services. And I'm the person that will do that. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Chino Mary Unishiloa. I have been on the... <laughs> Thank you. I've been on the Chino City Council for, since 1984. Of the 40 years, I've been mayor 20 years, and that's a directly elected position. So I'm kind of the old lady on the team. <laughs> I am run <laughs> I'm running for re-election. Uh, I have one opponent. Um, I'd like to ask very humbly for your support. My priorities are continued public safety and enhanced public safety. As you know, you know what the state has done when it comes to criminal activity. And Chino is fighting that. In fact, we have been fighting what the governor is trying to do to California Institute for Men, the prison that's in the city of Chino. The latest antique of Sacramento is they want to remove <clears throat> the guards from the gates which means anybody can drive in there, right up to where the yards are. So we, so far, select, uh, successfully has fought for that. But you know, we need public, biblically strong leadership in this country. <laughs> the only way we'll get our country back is through the love of Jesus Christ. We all know that. In Chino, we have never stopped praying in front of council meetings. We always pray. I also host a mayor's prayer breakfast every month with a lot of the ministers in town. <clears throat> and we continue to fight the evil that is in our community. We're blessed. We don't have that much negative going on. Thank to the God, thank to, thanks God. Um, I have always said that I honestly believe that, that Christ has an umbrella over our community. I mean, you're Chino Hills, right? Cavalry Chapel, Chino Hills. You're located in Chino. <laughs> Years ago, when I first met Pastor Jack, he came to me about 
purchasing this land and building the church. And I teased him and I said, well, just one thing. You're going to have to change your name. You cannot be Chino Hills in Chino. And he laughed. He goes, I can't change it. It's my charter. It is a privilege to have this community church here. Trust me. God bless you all. Please vote. Please vote yes on Proposition 36 to help offset Prop 47 that has caused so much damage. But let's change our legislature. It's the only hope we have in California. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here this evening. Almost done. I feel like a. Well, it's actually a normal time for you guys on the morning. <laughs> um, so, you guys, um, this next, uh, and I think our final uh, warrior to present to you tonight is no stranger to this community. Uh, she wasn't, she didn't ask for uh, being uh, point, I don't think she'll be offended by this point man. She's been leading for your children at her own peril. Uh, she has stood for your children's rights and for your rights, for your children's safety and for your information as their parent. Isn't it amazing? You brought your children into the world and the Democrat Party and the unions, they want to take your kids from you. And they're, they're doing it. And so this next individual is all for you knowing whatever is going on with your child because it's your child. And um, again, as I said, she's done this to great personal peril, death threats regularly, uh, her family. I can't say enough about her except that once again, we need more men like Sonia Shaw. Please welcome Sonia Shaw. Woo! <laughs> Let's give an applause to my sister in Christ, Gina, my sister in Christ, Karen, my brother in Christ, my brave, bold pastor, Pastor Jack, and Bob Tyler. What an amazing group that God has brought together. And can we give it a hand to all the candidates willing to go into the public and serve us under God's direction? Amazing. I am so encouraged tonight. There is moments that God knows, my sister knows, that I just feel down. The enemy gets me in the corner and I'm like, once again, prayer comes. The Bible verses that you get in the Bible, you read them and then there we are. Everything that they have told you is true and there's so much more. I'm not here as a board president tonight. I'm here as your sister in Christ. And I can tell you, I have seen horrific things that involve children. And it's, I, don't, I mean, it makes me emotional to think that if you don't start paying attention, your kids, the ones that you get afraid to speak up for, they're the ones going in the den. And if you don't, Take that boldness and that courage that God will give you. Our kids, we're just giving them to the, to the devil on a silver platter. That's what we're doing. I'm telling you right now, the horrors that I've seen. I got involved four years ago. I had no clue what any of this was. Didn't know what an elected position was. Wasn't involved. I was at another church that was speaking about things that God only knows. He ripped us out of there, put us in the right place, gave us the right tools, ran for that school board because I saw what was in front of the kids, but I only saw this much. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm pleading with you, get involved, pay attention. And when you get members in Congress, assembly, Senate, school board, city councils, don't ever stop going to those meetings and paying attention. I'm telling you right now, it's horrific. And unless we all do this together, no elected position, pers person in an elected position will ever be able to save what is coming towards our kids and in their future. Pay attention, get involved, pray, ask where your gifts can be used. You have a gift. 
God has given each of you a gift. Mine just happens to be a fighter. I am great in a corner, in a ring with those evil people. And I know that, and God uses that, and thank God he uses it for good. Yeah. That's my gift, but you each have it, and I'm encouraging you to please seek and, and pray to God where he wants you in this fight. We have a moral obligation to protect children. We are so blessed. Think about this. Where does this ever happen? This is such a blessing. This is so encouraging. And this is just the beginning. God's called you. And if we don't win one seat somewhere, we're going to continue together. I love you guys. Stay positive. Stay in the Bible. Stay in prayer. Gather together. That's what we're called to do. And keep encouraged. <laughs> call everybody out. Love you. Awesome. Thank you. Call everybody out. Yep. Maybe, Sonia, you can tell them all to come on out. <laughs> guys, can you hear me? Yes. Come on out, everybody. We'll you guys can stand. Come on. <laughs> come on out. Everyone, line up. We are going to pray for you all. <laughs> nice. There you go. While they assemble here, most important thing of all, and you've heard many of them reference the fact that none of this would be happening, nor would we have the confidence or the country or the nation or even this unbelievably remarkable state, California, without the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please remember that. It is our creator God. The Bible says that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the almighty God. The Bible tells us that he's the Lord of heaven's army. Think of that. This nation is on the brink of absolute judgment, and I believe God has been warning us as a country for a long time. And he doesn't want to judge. We've been learning this in our scripture reading as a church day by day, as well as our 21 days of fasting and prayer that the Lord does not want to judge. He says, please choose life and please choose me and follow me and you'll live. Your crops will be bountiful. Your children will be safe. Your borders will be secure, he said. God said that. It's as though he looked right into California and this nation, and he does. And so we right now lift up these candidates, Father, in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We know that there is a plethora of opposition and big money. We know that there's George Soros groups supporting the opposition to these candidates here. We know that Planned Parenthood is supporting the candidates in opposition to these that are standing here. Father, we know that those that will be at the school board meeting tomorrow night to put on this gross display of what looked like Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible is appearing in our communities from coast to coast and border to border. And even though, Jesus, you said it would be just like that before you returned, your word also tells us that there was judgment pronounced upon Nineveh, but they repented and you gave them 40 more years. We're asking you, Lord God, to have mercy upon America and that you would start with your act of mercy in the state of California. We're asking you, Lord, to hold this place in your jealous heart that this state would turn to you in righteousness. So, Father God, we pray for every one of these candidates from fire to school board, state assembly, Congress, Lord God, for board of education, school board. Father, that these men and women would be granted victory because it will turn out to be that they heard your voice, they responded to you in faith, They've put their lives on the line. There's no machine supporting them. There is no 501c3 called Planned Parenthood. 
with unlimited funds to back these candidates. They have run and they're running because they know what's right, they know what's wrong. There's absolutes. And God, we pray that you would shock this nation by doing a profound work in California that every pundit, every pollster, every news agency would be shocked on election day with their jaw dropping to see what happened in California. God, from the top of the state to the bottom of the state, from the Pacific, Lord, to the bordering states, California, God, we pray that once again, Sacramento, sacrament, sacred unto God, San Francisco, Santa Ana, San Diego, Los Angeles, City of Angels, all of these angelic and biblical and God references, California, we pray, Lord God, that you would take it back. Take back California, Lord, it's yours. And Father, we pray that you would bring evil to bankruptcy, that you'd bring evil to emptiness, that you'd bring evil to idol. God, you have told us in your word to stand. Over and over again, you've told us to stand. Daniel stood, you blessed him. Joseph stood, you blessed him. Moses stood, you blessed him. David stood, you blessed him. The list goes on and on. God, we are little, we are weak, but we're standing. And we ask you, Lord God, to have mercy upon us and to send victory and to send life and to send, Lord, repentance and renewal and revival to California. And we ask you to bless every one of these candidates now in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming.